that's the thing about this commission. It is good and bad news to an extent. The good news, and South Africans are welcoming it, is because it allows the country to really piece together these two years of allegations and further back for that matter. It, the commission will largely be informed by the public protectors report, which was itself explosive. But this morning, the commission explained that their main aim is to link what, how that corruption was influenced by the national executive of the country, essentially President Jacob Zuma, and how he, it influenced how he was able to. Um, his family was able to benefit from that, and the Gupta family. So they're looking specifically at that relationship. But the frustrating thing is that while President Zuma has apparently, according to a Sunday paper here, been asked to give testimony, we've heard no response from him. The Gupta family have since moved to Dubai. And while they say they will participate, it's unclear what form that participation will take place. And you're right about the prosecution aspect of this. The Commission and commissions in South Africa in general don't have prosecution power because the aim is to to open up, to reveal and bring transparency to these national issues. But unfortunately, during that time, no uh, criminal procedure can take place, and that's to encourage more witnesses to come forward. At the same time, that even though we have several hearings also going on in Parliament into uh, specific corruption around the rail agency, around uh, South Africa's National Electricity Agency. So the concern here is that this additional um, commission, even though it's very public, even though it aims to bring transparency, may slow down the process even further. I mean, so give us a clear idea then of what kind of tangible outcome, in the best case scenario for the South African public, what kind of tangible outcome could we see? So the best case scenario, first of all, is that the um, commission will lay bare exactly what happened. There is, there is mounting evidence. We've seen email leaks. We've seen ministers come forward to the, um, to the public in, in the form of the news media, sometimes even on Facebook. But we haven't really been able to connect the dots into what that means and just how deep this corruption went. So there's an understanding there of how South Africa's uh, state institutions were tainted by the Gupta family and particularly um, how that might be linked to the presidency. The other thing is that even though the commission is unable to prosecute, it can recommend prosecution based on certain evidence. The challenge here is for the National Prosecuting Authority to be able to build charges around the testimony that it's received here without incrementing the commission. And that's your challenge because, unfortunately, South Africa's National Prosecuting Authority at this moment is not particularly strong because it, too, has been seen as an institution infiltrated by corruption.